the Corps of Engineers. Engineers must be oriented and adapted to a multitude of tasks. The Army Corps of Engineers is raising the dam by eight meters. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers lays out their response plan. We provide infrastructure assessment, temporary roofing, temporary emergency power. We help with debris assessment and removal operations. We also work with temporary housing. And he'll tell you there's no end to the types of services the engineers provide. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Building Strong Buffalo podcast. This is the place to get to know the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Buffalo District, our people, and our stories. My name is Jess Levinson, your host and public affairs specialist with the district. Today's guest is Lex Barker, project manager with Buffalo, and we're here to discuss the Little Sodus Bay repair project at Fairhaven, New York on Lake Ontario. Now Little Sodus Harbor of Refuge provides safe passage between Little Sodus Bay and Lake Ontario. The harbor serves thousands of boat launches every season, and it generates nearly $11 million in total revenues each year and supports 107 jobs and $3.7 million in labor income. So let's get right into it and talk about the project. How are you today, Lex? Hey, good afternoon, Jess. Uh, I'm great. Uh, great weather, getting uh, into some fall weather here after uh, a lot of summer weather and uh, school starting this week too. So a lot going on here. A lot going on. It's uh, September 9th, so we're getting back into school season, and uh, let's take our audience to school with Little Sodus Bay. Can you give me a brief background summary of the project at Little Sodus Bay? There's a lot around flooding, a lot around erosion, um, a lot around these incredible high water events in 2017. Yeah, Jess. Um, so uh, the uh, specifically the West Pier project, uh, it's about a 600 foot section on the West Pier on the southern end of the West Pier. And uh, yeah, acknowledging the high water levels in 2017. Uh, and then um, in uh, February of 2019, um, also, I believe high water is that year as well. Um, there were uh, degradation to the West Pier, um, specifically the uh, the bolts uh, on that pier uh, uh, failed and uh, wave action over top the structure and the steel sheet pile uh, ripped away from the uh, concrete cap and the concrete cap cap uh, ended up slanted as well. And uh, those the uh, the degradation there, uh, you know, we recognized it right away and made multiple site visits uh, with a design team and an operations team to assess the damage out there. And uh, we're able to uh, formulate a repair uh, fairly quickly. Uh, and I know we'll talk more about that uh, later on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for sharing all of that, Lex. Um, nice little summary there. And when we were talking about the high water events of 2017 and 2019, you know, what what kind of energy and wave action is going on around uh, Little Sodus Bay? Can you talk a little bit about um, how the waves are actually affecting the structure because you know these are cyclical changes they're going to happen um, over and over again so let's educate our audience on what is actually happening with these high water how is it what is the difference between a low water and the damage it can uh you know how the structure is withholding or maintaining itself in low water versus high water yeah, so in high water, the wave action within the channel uh, is so great that it overtops the structure. Um, and then uh, obviously water um, landing on top of the structure, uh, you could have icing, um, you know, and that icing puts stress 
on the structure. Um, and what we saw out on the West Pier uh, prior to when I came onto the project is uh, there were multiple sections uh, that had uh, uh, distance between the steel sheet pile and the concrete cap. And the water was getting inside uh, between there um, and, you know, causing sort of uh, like a, an ice jacking. Um, and then obviously that led to the previously described, you know, the bolt failures there as well. So obviously the high water creating uh, more wave action, higher wave action within the channel uh, and then causing that degradation to the pier. Gotcha. So it's not just waves hitting it it's when waves over top a structure and then due to weather and conditions it it um changes the form of water it changes it into ice and then when the ice thaws and then all of these things all of these processes are happening to um affect the integrity of like a concrete structure yes correct gotcha so my next question is, why are we involved? Why are we even talking about this? So a, a peer uh, got damaged due to natural forces. Um, why, why are we doing something about it? Yeah, that's a great question. So as part of our operations and maintenance authority, uh, we maintain uh, many structures uh, on many commercial and recreational harbors. Um, and obviously one, uh, Little Sodas Harbor uh, in Fairhaven, New York. Uh, so we uh, maintain the uh, East Pier and the West Pier. And so that uh, succinctly describes why we're involved. Mm -hmm. And how the <clears throat> how the ball get rolling on the project? Um, we maintain it, but how did we know something was happening? How did we get the funding for it? What was the timeline leading up to all this work? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so we had done uh, out of our operations uh, section uh, had done um, multiple uh, annual inspections. Uh, and then, as I mentioned earlier, in February, end of February 2019, uh, it was uh, noticed uh, actually by a local photographer a uh, great individual, um, Kyle Meddow. Um, he had posted, uh, he had been out uh, on the pier. There's an adjacent park nearby that to, to, uh, connects the pier uh, and had posted to social media. And uh, uh, the congressional offices were also notified as well. And then um, it uh, came to me. Uh, we had uh, one of our supervisors uh, stop over later on uh, in the week explaining a little bit about what's going on out there and we're going to get some funding reprogrammed to the project as soon as possible um, and then uh, did a little bit more uh, research and found you know hundreds and then up into thousands of uh, views and shares you know on that social media post and there were mm -hmm. some excellent photos um, of uh, the wave action that was out there and exactly what happened to the pier uh, and then from there right we got funding to um, start to uh, you know get out there do some uh, reconnaissance efforts uh, with the design team and operations team uh, and then we moved over you know into uh, um, formulating uh, temporary repair out there well i love hearing how social media uh, was was a big part of uh, this project because I'm also our social media manager, so uh, it's good to know that people sharing things, people getting out there and, uh, and us looking at it and uh, engaging with it is is helpful for these projects. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Uh, this is a strong community and we appreciate their support on the project. I know there was a unique contracting strategy used. I don't know exactly what that means, but uh, from what I understand, it helped us get this project done as quickly as possible. Would you mind talking about that? Yeah, yep. And uh, it was the first time using that uh, contracting strategy on a project, on one of my projects. Uh, my understanding, it's the 8A uh, is what it call, what it's called, small business. Uh, so we're able to contact um, companies that qualify under that program. 
and were able to do uh, you know initial uh, temporary repairs uh, quickly, uh, more quickly than say going out uh, for bid on projects. And we're able to do it within, I believe, a certain dollar threshold. And then again, there's some other requirements for that contracting strategy, but it was great to be able to use it for this project. Yeah, I love innovative solutions, um, especially if it helps us get it done and do it well. And um, we talked about the design in terms of what what was the solution, you know? the design of uh, these temporary repairs. And when I take a look at the pictures, I'm like, I'm like, OK, it looks like uh, some piano keys holding holding a sheet pile together or it looks like um, like a marionette strings. Like <laughs> how would you describe the design uh, both in terms of technical and then what does it look like? Yeah, that's a great analogy. Um, and obviously the folks out there uh, see what has been done. Uh, and the great thing is, is that it's held up, which is great um, as we head into more permanent repairs. Um, we've had very little change out there, but as far as uh, what you described is great. So there's uh, um, uh, brackets, we'll call them, uh, and they're yellow, so they're very visible, uh, painted yellow, and they encompass the entire 600 foot uh, on the channel side, uh, and what those do is prevent uh, further, say, the ice jacking uh, from occurring, which would rip the steel sheet pile away from the concrete cap. So it holds, uh, there's there's dozens of them that line the pier, and then the key area is where the steel sheet pile ripped away from the, and the concrete cap settled. Uh, we have uh, bolts there, uh, with steel cables that run across the top of the concrete cap, and those are connected at each ends of the steel sheet pile to hold that in place. Um, and because that area um, uh, is, uh, you know, obviously the concrete cap uh, being slanted, we were able to put uh, fencing around that as well uh, to, to keep anybody from entering that area. So that's uh, that's good, um, you know, from a safety perspective. Um, while we're awaiting for, you know, funding for permanent repairs. Wonderful. Got to keep people safe on these structures. I know even when they look good, people are going on them and, and getting hurt. So appreciate yeah, that, yeah, all that of our aspect. Are, yeah, all of our structures are navigation, uh, but we do realize uh, that the public has access. Uh, so we have to take that into account as well. Mm -hmm. And this was a temporary solution, right? So there's uh, more permanent repairs on the horizon, and there's more work still to be done. Uh, why? Why is this? Why not just? Why not just do the permanent repairs? Yeah. So uh, we have to go through our budget cycle, um, which uh, starts every year, uh, typically around the February timeframe with the president's budget. Uh, and then, if a project is listed in the president's budget, that's a great first start. And then we look in uh, October, which is the beginning of our fiscal year, uh, to have Congress uh, do the final approval with, of that, uh, typically currently in a work plan. Um, and so we've submitted a budget uh, for the project. Um, but of course, uh, there's a lot of need out there, a lot of infrastructure need out there. So very challenging um, to get funding on projects. Uh, and then very fortunately this year, we were able to uh, get the project was listed in this year's president's budget for fiscal year 2022. And obviously we'll be heading into October soon and um, we'll be relying on Congress to do the final approval for that work plan and get the uh, president's signature on that. Uh, and then we'll be able to do uh, the permanent repairs. Awesome, so it's not uh, not far off here. So how are these repairs? and the Corps of Engineers uh, helping the communities. Um, what sticks out to you about the people that you've worked with, the communities on Little Sotus and the Sotus Bays? Um, what's unique about what we're doing to help? Yeah, so this is a uh, active, uh, engaging community. Um, they definitely have a lot of support uh, behind the project. Um, 
and specifically I've been in contact mainly with the Fairhaven mayor, uh, Mr. Jim Basile. He's great to work with um, and we've been in touch throughout the project, uh, keeping him updated and he does a great job uh, keeping the community updated as well. Uh, they definitely uh, love that area there. It's a beautiful area, great to visit. Um, definitely recommend uh, anybody going there, everybody going there and visiting um, uh, and, you know, enjoying the beautiful scenery there um, that uh, that we have with uh, Lake Ontario, you know, one of the five Great Lakes and just a great community. Thanks for sharing that. And my my last hard hitter here is um, that according to the files that I've looked at, the Corps of Engineers constructed that pier, the West Pier, in 1854. And we're now seeing, you know, over time, especially with these high recent high water events, that structure is, you know, essentially breaking in half. And you have a lot of projects along Lake Ontario that I'm curious whether you're seeing the same thing. What's the current state of all these navigation structures on Lake Ontario and how does Little Sotus, uh, how is that just a microcosm of it? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I'm very fortunate to have uh, many projects along Lake Ontario. Uh, it's a place where uh, I grew up visiting numerous times and uh, you know all the way uh, Oswego and Little Sotus uh, with projects at Great Sotus and Rochester Harbor and there's a lot of rec harbors too uh, where uh, obviously there's piers um, and then uh, breakwaters as well and you know we've seen degradation um, at all of them uh, over over time obviously uh, as I mentioned earlier uh, infrastructure need is great out there uh, th there's uh, there's plenty of demand out there for uh, repairing these structures and maintaining these harbors. And I think uh, one of you things that's uh, unique about uh, this project, uh, obviously uh, with the West Pier, is that uh, we want to encapsulate the pier, uh, which will uh, uh, increase the ability of the pier um, and the functionality uh, for those higher wave, uh, the higher wave action as well. Um, so when we, uh, you know, encapsulate the pier uh, basically over over top the current pier, uh, it'll provide better protection. Uh, and that's what we're doing on uh, the breakwaters, say at Oswego, and the same thing with the pier at Rochester uh, and other harbors on Lake Ontario. Lex, is there anything else you want to add today? Uh, it's great to join you for the podcast here, uh, specifically you know, Little Sotus West Pier is a great project, a uh, great community out there and looking forward to providing that uh, permanent solution out there. Uh, as uh, you know, our motto is building strong and that's what we strive for. So we strive to put a permanent repair out, repair out there for many decades to come. Building strong. I love it, Lex. Thanks for joining me. Thank you for being on the Building Strong Buffalo podcast and sharing yourself with the world. We are living, working, and engineering in a time of tremendous change. And as always, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is adapting and innovating to deliver engineering solutions to our nation's toughest challenges. If you want to learn more about the Buffalo District, check out the description for our website and social media pages. And don't forget to check your favorite podcast apps and search us and subscribe and follow the Building Strong Buffalo podcast. Thank you for listening and essay on. Yay.